Hello and welcome to India's World. Today we are going to discuss the implications of the removal of Thailand's Prime Minister Yingluk Shinwatra in what is being described as a judicial coup. She has become the th third Prime Minister of Thailand to be removed by a court order. Since 1932, when Thailand became a constitutional monarchy, nine Prime Ministers have been removed by military coup d'etats. Yingluk's brother, Thaksin Shinwatra, was removed as Prime Minister through a bloodless coup by the army in 2006. This time, the Prime Minister and nine of her ministers have been sacked by the Thai Constitution Court for illegally removing a national security advisor who had been appointed by the previous government. Yingluk is charged with creating a situation which required rejigging of the security apparatus in which she appointed a close relative as the national police chief. She has also been indicted by an anti-corruption body for a controversial rice subsidy scheme. She now faces impeachment and a five-year ban from politics. To understand the unfolding political crisis in Thailand, we have with us three distinguished experts. All three have served as India's ambassadors to Thailand. We have with us Ambassador Ranjit Gupta, a veteran diplomat. He has served in several Indian missions abroad. He has been India's ambassador to North Yemen, Venezuela, Spain, Oman and Thailand. We have uh, with us Ambassador Vivek Karju. He retired as Secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs. He was also India's ambassador to Myanmar, Afghanistan and Thailand. And we have with us Ambassador Pinak Ranjan Chakravarti. He was also a Secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs. He served as India's High Commissioner to Bangladesh and also as Ambassador to Thailand. So welcome all of you to this discussion. Uh, Ambassador Gupta, let me begin with you. This present crisis began in November 2013. Although people could say it began, began much earlier, but let's take 2013, November 2013 as the beginning. When an amnesty bill was introduced and people said that this is being done, uh, introduced by uh, Prime Minister Yingluk Shinwatra, so that her brother Thaksin can come back to Thailand from exile and not serve a jail sentence. So there was mass protests organized by a former Deputy Prime Minister, Sutep Thoksuban, and the Senate ultimately rejected the bill. But that didn't satis satisfy the protesters. They kept coming up with new demands. Ultimately, the entire opposition uh, resigned from Parliament. There was a midterm election on February 2nd. Even that election, which was won by Yingluk by default, has now been uh, 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 declared null and void. And now another election is staring us in the face on July 20th. Now, do you think uh, this crisis will go on and on and on, or would it be resolved at some point? Well, in my considered view, this is merely the latest act of very sordid political drama, yeah. which has been unfolding in Thailand for more than a decade now. It is not about Yingluk. It is about the extinguishing the political challenge of Thaksin Shinawat. That is what it has all been about since 2001. And it will continue to be about that okay. until they succeed or Thaksin wins. And I would not rule out that possibility. And I can come to it later yeah. in the, to explain what I mean. All right, all right sure. Vivek, uh, you have often argued that the crisis in Thailand is a result as, as, uh, of, of uh, a, 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 a contest between the Bangkok elite, the royalists, the military, the entrenched bureaucracy, and new money. Old money versus new money, I think, is what you uh, said in an article of yours. And who was the symbol of that uh, new money? But Thaksin Shinwatra, who was a policeman, who became a billionaire, who owned uh, a communications company, many satellites, etc., etc. And he becomes the Prime Minister of uh, Thailand, ultimately. Now, uh, does the ouster of his sister, uh, Yingluk Shinwatra, imply that the old elite is still well entrenched and they have full control over the judiciary and other organs of the Thai state? I think they have control over the organs of the Thai, Thai state, not as fully as they did in the past. Because within the institutions in Thailand, there are elements and substantial elements who support uh, Thaksin. Uh, not because of Thaksin per se, but because I think some of them feel that at the end of the day, the democratic principles will have to be applied to, tha to Thai polity. Why don't we hear these voices? Because, uh, no, we are within the, the, within the institutions, these voices are being expressed. But the, the, the hold of the old elite over the institutions is very substantial. And as long as His Majesty, the, the present King, is there on the scene, 
uh, the institutional structures of Thailand will be within the control of uh, the old elite. Okay. Um, taking this point further, Pinak, uh, uh, you've written a newspaper article recently where you say that the Thai Constitutional Court is packed with royalist sympathizers. Do you base that assertion on the fact that the Constitutional Court uh, was set up after Thaksin Shinwatra himself was removed in a bloodless coup? Uh, or is there any other basis for making that claim? There is no doubt that many of the institutions have nominated members and hence these are pro-royalists. But let me also add another factor which Vivek uh, mentioned obliquely, which is about the ailing king and, and his passing away will create a totally new situation in the, at least in the royal family and the monarchy. Now if that happens, basically now you are seeing a power struggle uh, between the old elite and the new money or the new elite that is rising, okay. represented by Thaksin. So I think there is a generational change also coming to Thailand and this fight uh, for political power and economic power is about, uh, about, about sharing of power right. and an old and an ancient regime unwilling to, unwilling to move out of the way. Okay. That All is right. the issue. Okay, thank you. We need to take a break at this point. We'll be back again with this interesting discussion in a bit. Don't go away. Welcome back. We are discussing the unfolding crisis in Thailand. Uh, Vivek, do you agree with the claims of the royalists and the protesters in Bangkok streets that Yingluk's government has been buying votes through irresponsible spending schemes, by which they mean the rice subsidy scheme, the, the, the health scheme, all the social sector spending that has been going on since Thakshin Sinwatra's time? Do you think that kind of spending distorts democracy? You see, it... Uh it really depends on how do you define these schemes. Uh, in India, we are used to these schemes. We don't think that uh, they distort democracy. We discuss the they merits of the… They distort the market, but they don't distort democracy. Exactly. We discuss the merits of the… the economic merits of these schemes, but we don't say that they are distorting democracy. Let me just add one sentence, Bhairav. Uh, and as a general proposition, which will apply to Thailand too, wherever elites have accepted the democratic principle and the consequences of adult suffrage, those countries remain stable. And I think there, the Indian elites of different kinds since 1947 have played a stellar role because they have always accepted this. And that is what is lacking in Thailand. Okay. Uh, Ambassador Gupta, uh, while there is no doubt that the anti-government protesters are united in the opposition to Thakshin Shinwatra and his sister uh, Yingluk Shinwatra, now they claim that uh, Thaksin still controls the Futhai party, the party that is in power. If that is so, how can a caretaker government of the same party oversee the July 20th elections and why should that be acceptable to the protesters? Well, we are assuming that there will be an election on July the 20th. I am not so sure that there will be an election on July the 20th. Yes, Thaksin controls this party. He has controlled all the parties since the Thai Rak Thai was originally uh, founded and then banned. And he will continue to control new morphings of these parties till he is around. Uh, it is not... I would uh, make one point, it's not so much about new money. He empowered the rural poor, which nobody had bothered about it in Thailand. Of course he is rich, but having s succeeded in that endeavor, he is now, he cannot be displaced from power. Mm -hmm. The ground realities are such that if you have a free and fair election, any Thaksin created, supported, mentored political party is going to win. That's the bottom line. All right. but my question really was about uh, uh, the caretaker government and you know, the, the possible route to democracy. Now, the leader of the protester, Sutep Thaksuban, says that his committee, which he has formed, should uh, lead a caretaker government and they will hold elections to change the system that existing political parties can't do it. Now, there is also another route which is given in the Thai constitution, that is section 7, which says that the king can appoint a neutral prime minister. So, do you see that happening? 
because this clearly this prime minister the congress minister who's become prime minister is not acceptable to the protesters they're back in the streets yeah they are back in the streets in fact as we speak they have surrounded government house in in bangkok and i believe the the red shirts the supporters of thaksin are on their way from the rural heartland into bangkok so i think you will see a bit of mob rule again in uh, in bangkok but uh, suthep's uh, you know suggestion that he should be empowered to choose is quite bizarre i mean what is the mandate for him to choose i mean they one of the problems in thailand is that the old elite which is represented through the democrat party has no hope of winning any election in for the foreseeable future because the masses which uh, who have been empowered by thaksin's public welfare programs and are solid supporters of his party any party that he forms yeah. whether now or in no, the no, future but a, a recent survey shows that 43% of thai people think that only a neutral prime minister can solve the an appointed prime minister can solve the problem and only 23% think that the new prime minister should be democratically elected there is this deep cleavage now as as we know so i think there is a feeling also that let the king because the king is held in such high esteem yeah. that if he appoints somebody who is reasonably neutral and he has done that in the past that people are more likely to accept that, uh, that I want option to, uh, i want to take this question to you vivek do you think a neutral prime minister appointed by the uh, king can lead thailand to democracy because my basic question is how can the problem of thailand be solved through a democratic election when you know very well that in any democratic election it is the thaksin supporters who have the majority you see that is the real issue that the thaksin supporters are more numerous because thaksin support is the north and the east now the royalists are there in bangkok but they are also in the south <coughs> and in the south it's from the south that they draw the support but the cleavages and the divisions in the country are enormous the real issue is this that i believe that the king was the head of the bangkok elite thaksin has challenged the very foundations of that order so in a sense he has challenged the king and therefore and uh, there is now very little scope of accommodative politics so therefore uh, master gupta the king who's being challenged by the new people's emperor as it were cannot be expected to be fair to the challenger no if in the immediate short term if the king appoints a neutral um, prime minister caretaker prime minister that will be accepted but that does not change the outcome the outcome will still remain the same you may have a neutral prime minister who's carrying out the elections but the outcome of the elections will be a return of whichever party the new name it may have because this party will be banned also and the shinwatra family will, will be come banned. back there is no two ways about it shinwatra family will come back or their supporters that, will come back that shinwatra shinwatra has you know there there were two other prime ministers before young look who were nominated for all practical purposes by shinawatra anybody whom he nominates it doesn't matter who it is it is a thaksin crowd now his majesty is very old he is in very fragile health there is an issue about succession we are going to discuss succession in the next segment but you wanted to add no, no, something i wanted to say basically that it is to my mind old money and new money because the, what i when i use the term new money i mean the new boys on the block and the new boys on the block have made money through new enterprises not through traditional economic enterprises in thailand and they have uh, built roots in the north and the east unfortunately the old elite have not even challenged them there that is because they are rooted in an old mindset okay pinak if the old elite is not going to accept the new elite is not going to uh, accept the rising political establishment then what can a neutral prime minister do a neutral prime minister will be able to do nothing nothing very much i agree and as uh, ambassador gupta said that outcome will not change the thaksin supported party whichever it is and therefore the crisis will not end the crisis will be a long drawn out affair yes, because yes. you are dealing i would say with the soul of thailand okay. and who controls the soul of thailand whether it will be a democratic soul or rooted in the ancient okay, right. we need to take a break at this point we will be back again with this interesting discussion in a bit don't go away welcome back we're discussing the unfolding crisis in thailand 
Uh, Vivek, do you think the frustration of the royalists with the democratic process, uh, the frustration that they cannot uh, uh, get rid of this uh, a new rising elite or subdue them, do you think that it might lead to a military coup in Thailand? It well may. You see, the real issue is that the old elite thinks today that if they are able to oust Thai Thaksin, yep. they will be able to overcome the immediate challenge. And they then feel that they'll have space to really address the issues and maneuver their way out through this, this problem which has been there since 2000, the early 2000s, yep. since Thaksin established control. Yep. No. But uh, even if they remove Thaksin, it might not address the, the old problem. And therefore, as things are unfolding, the judicial um, uh, sort of way is, I think, eventually will lead to a coup like it had in 2006. Okay. Uh, uh, Pinak, um, now, for, for there to be a coup, you will have to crush the red shirts, the, the supporters of uh, uh, Pyutai party, uh, Shinwatra supporters. But once you do that, is there a possibility of the army itself uh, splitting? Because the army recruits don't come only from the south or from Bangkok. They also come from the same society which is deeply divided. Th that's a problem that the Thai military is facing and the army in particular. Because the <coughs> foot soldiers are really from, foot soldiers are from the red shirt background. And I think the army will have to be very, very careful. And I don't think the army is keen on a coup. But if push comes to shove, and there, are, there is bloodshed and the red shirts can occupy certain parts of Bangkok as they did in the March of 2010 and when there was, a, there was bloodshed in removing them. Yeah. And then the army may be forced to come in and, uh, and Thailand, Thailand has had a long history of uh, military yeah. coups. Apparently somebody counted almost 19 big and small since 1932. Yeah. So Nine that, is a, that is a distinct possibility. But I think the army is reluctant. Okay. Do you want to add something on the coup or can I ask you yes, something different? Uh, uh, first, even if a coup takes place, it is going to be a very short term, yeah. within months solution of the problem. Election. This is not a problem which a coup is going <coughs> to solve. Yeah. In fact, I think it's going to be years yeah. before we are going to have a, a proper solution. Okay. And that is related, in my view, the proper solution to the succession. Yeah. I'm going to come to the succession in a bit, but let me quickly ask you one question on, on the impact this disturbance would have on, on Thailand's economy and its business prospects because already, uh, I mean, although their, their rating has not been downgraded, standards uh, and poor's has said that this, is, this development is credit negative. So what kind of impact do you see on uh, Thailand's economy? Thailand's economy may not have been negatively affected in the, co in the sense that you have mentioned. But supposing all this had not been happening, yeah. it would have been bouncing forward. Yeah. So it has been affected badly yeah. and it will continue to be affected adversely. Okay. Vivek, uh, uh, on, on the Thai monarchy and succession, but uh, King Bhumibol Adulya Dej is 86 years old. He's ailing. Uh, he has a certain aura uh, which you mentioned, but is he willing to use that to unite Thai society? Because there seems to be a reluctance on part of the monarchy to intervene on behalf of the people. It seems to be intervening on behalf of uh, or, or tacitly supporting the old establishment. You see, they don't think Thaksin is, is in favor of the people. Their worldview is very different from that of Thaksin. They, they believe that they are the true benefactors of the people. And that the king has devoted all his life in the service of the people. So, therefore, they feel that Thaksin, by raising unnecessary expectations, is following populist methods which are truly harmful to Thai society and uh, to Thailand as a whole. So, therefore, no solution can be expected from the king? I don't think so. Okay. Let me ask you a slightly different question. Now, the crown prince... Uh, Vazira Longkorn is not liked by a lot of people, including you, I think, because you, <laughs> you, you wrote, uh, you know, uh, unfavorable things about him. But he is considered as sympathetic to the red shirts. He is friendly with Thaksin. In fact, one of the big uh, red shirt protests was outside his palace. And observers said that this is to show their support for uh, the crown prince. Therefore, a lot of people conclude that this entire agitation that you see in the streets of Bangkok is not about furthering democracy. But it's about tweaking the succession, that they don't want the crown prince to run away with the crown and they would want somebody else so that the old establishment could continue. Do you agree with this? No, no, there, I, I don't agree with it 
principally because uh, I think the succession heir apparent etc has more or less been decided because the crown prince has also been given charge of two very important brigades, military brigades, which is certainly <coughs> a step forward for succession. But I agree that he is not the preferred choice of say the many, many people, including within the royal family and the royalists. His sister is far more popular and he is himself believed to be under the influence of Mr. Thaksin. So you have this peculiar situation where Mr. Thaksin actually influences the next king, the would-be king. Mm. And that is not liked by a lot of people because that really, really helps him uh, maintain his political uh, influence in Thai. Vivek, do you think the succession line will be changed? You know the, the sister of the crown prince very well, I know. Uh, I don't think so. Mm. I agree with uh, Vinat that uh, uh, Royal Highness uh, Mahachakri, Sirindhon is very, very popular. Uh, and that many people may well like a, a situation where uh, the son of the Crown Prince is appointed heir and uh, under some kind of a regency arrangement where the Crown Princess, as she is called, may be there. Uh, but I don't think the Thai uh, monarchy as of now will take that risk. Well, that's good news, isn't it? Because you have a crown prince who's friendly with the, uh, the, the red shirts, the, 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 uh, the people who uh, in the north and in the east. And perhaps uh, if succession takes place, that would also lead to a, a, a solution to the Thai problem. Because here would be somebody who's actually willing to talk and compromise with the new establishment. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that he's friendly with the red shirts and vice versa. He's friendly with Thaksin. Mm -hmm. So, it can be uh, short-term via media. But if the Crown Prince and Thaksin get together, mm -hmm. then the so-called establishment or the royalist camp per se will, I'm quite sure, come out in favour of Princess Mahachakri. And Mah Princess Mahachakri has the added advantage of being immensely popular among the public at large, okay. including particularly in the north and the northeast, okay. which is the bastion of Thaksin. Okay. So you have uh, all kinds of potential problems, possibilities developing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thailand is in for a lot of political instability, unquestionably. Okay, Vivek, you wanted to say something. No, no, I, I, I don't know whether the crown, uh, whether Princess Mahachakri herself would be willing to do yes, this. Yes, I mean, that, that I agree. Uh, that's the first point. That yeah. is, that I agree. The second point is, let's not assume that uh, that uh, the crown prince is all that friendly with Thaksin. After all, he will also be uh, conscious of his inheritance and of the support he he will have to have from the royalists. Yeah. So, uh, these are very delicate issues and it's, okay. it's, it's, we shouldn't make assumptions here. Alright. Now, you know, let me ask you my last question, the same question to all of you. How should India view this unfolding crisis in Thailand and does it affect our Look East policy? Does it affect our trade, trade agreements with Thailand? Should we be worried with instability in Thailand? But quick answers from each one of you, please. Uh, Thailand, as you know, has been a very important uh, uh, fulcrum of our Look East policy. And hence, any deterioration in the Thai economy is going to affect our trade and investment and including the large number of tourists that visit uh, Thailand. And I see that that is effect going to affect. So, Vivek, should we be worried? Of course, we should be worried, but there is very little that we can do or anyone can do. There is an internal Thai problem and the Thais have to resolve it. I wasn't suggesting we do anything, but how should we look at it? We should look at it in an interested fashion, hoping for the best outcome, but there is nothing we can do about it. The and what I don't would be the think, best outcome? And I don't think there is going to be any very major impact on India. At the end of the day, hmm. Thailand-India trade is insignificant compared to the global picture of Indian trade. Yes, uh, the number of Indian tourists who are going there, which are helping the Thai economy, not the Indian economy, might be affected. But what about the look-east policy? I mean, you can't yes, look-east look policy, east policy overlooking policy, Thailand. look-east policy naturally gets affected when there is instability in important countries which have been yes. very, very significant in the evolution of our look-east policy. And that should be a matter of concern. Okay. All right. We've run out of time. Thank you very much for coming here and analyzing the situation in Thailand. Uh, it's very complicated, but you've 
shed very interesting light on the situation. So thank you once again. That's all we have for you today. We'll be back again next week with another interesting issue. Till then, goodbye and thanks for watching.